guys. I hope you're grand. Welcome back to Underground with the Unbounds. I am your host, LJ. Today we're cooling with author slash poet Royal Black. Hey sis, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Please tell us a bit about yourself. Royal Black is such a cool name, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please all black over here. Yeah. So, um, like you said, I'm an author. I wrote a book titled Anatomy of Emotions. It is a poetry collection. I'm a poet, a writer of all sorts. So, yeah, that is me. I do. And how did you get the name Royal Black? Royal Black. Yeah. Royal Black was was a name I was given by I was given it by a friend that was supposed to be Black Royal but then he was like no let's make it Royal Black because you know the combination of being black and being who I am and owning the blackness that is me and then being you know royalty from royal so yeah became Royal Black gotcha. yeah. uh, how long have you been writing writing yeah as long as I knew how to write <laughs> uh. I've been writing since form one that's when I started learning how to write and I was just plagiarizing other people's work but it counts as writing. I, I think I started actually writing pieces that are my own sometime after high school, yeah. Mm. Uh, and what about performing? Performing? Yeah. You mean when, when, when did performing, I start performing? Yeah, when did you start performing? Yeah. Uh, I, what was it? I did one performance. That was like my first ever performance. It was 2018, I think. I'm not quite sure. It was an open mic thing. I went there and yeah, I bombed, but it was good. It was my first performance. That was when I started. I, I just do wherever I can find an open mic session, then I go, I do it. Yeah. Because I've seen you perform and it seems like you're you have like you're good at it like no nah, i just perform i remember performing and for the first time it wasn't like i still i'm still not in that zone um, for me i haven't found it yet but uh, yeah, i watch you and it's like it's it's pretty dope i like it yeah oh, thank you it's, it's so effortless thank um, you. yeah it's a lot of effort <laughs> well behind that effort is look yeah yeah now you have a poem titled masterpiece of god's creation i do yeah mm-hmm. where you sort of like affirm and own the position right your beauty your strength your divinity as a black african woman mm-hmm. you own that through the peace mm-hmm. right uh to be honest black women like all over the world have been strong for bs like for the longest time mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. so i want to ask you what does strength mean for you in particular. What does strength mean? Yeah. I don't believe in strength. Mm. But can I just I don't believe in what other people believe strength is. Okay. I think like strength should be overcoming the things that are preaching you from inside, not what other people are forcing onto you to say this is you know what life should be for you or you know the things that people you know how women are treated in today's society it since ever in fact and then withholding and withstanding those things then you're called strong i don't think that's strength i think strength is just from your inner self you know if i'm going through something emotionally mentally and then i survive that thing that is strength for me but anything outside of that is just Anything external, that's not really strength. That's just being put through stuff you shouldn't be. I feel it. I feel it. Now, um, currently we find ourselves in, in a sort of like constant tug with our culture and tradition, right? What are some of the things that you think or feel we need to do away with completely or at least revise to speak more to us as young Batuan? Hmm. With, within our culture? Yeah. That is it serious question <laughs> I don't know I believe that people should be allowed to do what works for them like if I say for example that I think Bukhari should be done away with what if it works for someone else you know I just think that people should be allowed the the room to use the things that 
work for them and leave those that don't if i feel like oh, it doesn't work for me then i shouldn't be forced into using it i shouldn't be forced to say this is part of our tradition then use it and work with it i just believe that if something works for me then great but just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for the next person you know because there are people who understand these things Ghana, the way tradition works tradition we were taught in school that tradition is dynamic it changes over time some people will tell you that this, some of these traditions that we hold strong to they were not actually ours from the beginning we just adopted them from other people so the more we adopt the more we change then these things will also change but just let people do what works for them that's what i say so yeah now um, let's talk about your book mm-hmm. anatomy of emotions right yes is this your first book this is my first book yeah probably not let me not see it this is my first book but definitely not the last book oh definitely not the last yeah what's so what what's the story behind anatomy of emotions anatomy of emotions like I said, it's a poetry collection. It's a collection of poems that I wrote over three, maybe three years, I think. I have a problem including last year into the number of years. <laughs> so somewhere there, somewhere about three years. And I just wrote poems as they came to me, you know, going through what I was going through. I decided I'm a writer and this is how I express myself. So I expressed myself through poetry. I wrote that down. And then sometime last year during the pandemic when everything was closed down and someone was like, one of my friends was like, you've been saying you're going to write a book for the longest time. People are being creative right now. People are doing that things. So what are you doing? I was like, let me write a book. But for the life of me, I couldn't come up with anything to write. So I was like, let me look back to what I've written before and get inspiration. I looked at the poems that I've written because usually when I write, I just write something and then I, I leave it, go on to the next thing. I looked at all the things I've written. I was like, this, this is it. This is what people need to see because as I read those poems, they reflected what, what I felt at those times. And even after passing through those stages in my life, it, it still, you know, it still touched me in a way. So I just decided, let me put this together. I collected those poems that I felt relate a certain message. And then I wrote more stuff. I put it together and said, sent it out to get published. Awesome, awesome. Now, I know you talk a lot about mental health issues through your craft mm-hmm. again yeah why do you think these issues are more prevalent now more than ever i don't think they're more prevalent now i think now it's we're starting to talk about it we imagine i don't know think about this every society every community there's that one person these people are the same people who are going through certain mental health issues. There are people in our in our families who are going through these things. They hide behind alcohol, behind drugs, and we just say, hey, we give them names, you know. But it's always been there. It's just that now we're, we are talking about it more. Now we are giving it a name, and people are starting to be able to identify the feelings that they're having. We've been having these feelings for the longest time, but nobody was, no one was saying, I'm depressed. It was just... Uh, what I am I just said, you know. So we're starting to talk about it more. It looks like it's something new, but it's nothing new. It's been there for the longest time. And then, seeing as you went through those issues, what would your advice be to you know someone going through the same thing or something similar? Uh, I'm going to say something that I hated when people told me, yeah. but it gets better. The truth is, it gets it gets better it's it might not get better permanently but it will get better like in the midst of all the sadness in the midst of all the bad and the there's there's a bit of good there's a brightness there's light at the end of the tunnel as they say so that's what i can say like look forward to, to the good days because there will always be good days yeah if if you don't mind me asking like how's your relationship with yourself no. With myself, yeah, it has ups and downs like every relationship. <laughs> um, I mean, I've grown a lot, I've come to accept a lot of things that I never thought I'd be able to accept in my life. I've come to realize that you know, you take life with, with a grain of salt, you know, you know that 
things might happen for you today but doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be like that tomorrow so i've come to accept that i've come to learn who i am and i'm still growing i'm still teaching myself who i am and rediscovering and growing with every day you know taking each day as it comes taking each day as it comes yeah. yes on a lighter note <laughs> if no poetry what would you be doing if not for poetry yeah I'll be writing. I don't know if there's a world in which I don't write. Mm. Well, unless I was smart enough to be a doctor, then I'll be a doctor. <laughs> All right. Which I think, to some extent, you are with your words. With my words. Yeah. Yeah. To some extent. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. That's cool. Uh, who's your favorite wordsmith locally? Locally, wordsmith. I love I love J.K. Rowling and how he does what he does. He's so smooth that. With it, I just love what it does, and and some poets I know. Kodiso is great. I've read a few of her poems. I've loved them. She's great. Yeah, yeah. So those are the people that come to mind. Yeah. Continentally, I'm a big fan of Rudy. Rudy Francis. If I'm saying it right, yeah. Rudy, I'm a big fan of Rudy. Yeah, and I've just recently come into the work of Emily Bronte. It is awesome. I feel her vibe. Like people are all Shakespeare, but I feel Emily and the level of crazy she is on her level too. Those are people on the on the continent. You, you said continent. Yeah. I went worldwide. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. that's still fine. I don't, but I don't yeah, know. what about on the continent? Yeah. I don't know because I'm I'm funny enough I'm teaching myself poetry now because I just dived into it with my own stuff and what I know. Now I'm just teaching myself and looking at the continent and the world offers, but I don't know. Continentally, I can say anyone. I feel bad, but I can't say anyone. Because, yeah. yeah, I know a lot of people, when they speak continentally, they speak about Lebo Mashile. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if you know, she's South African. She's, mm-hmm. she's a yeah, badass poet. Oh. She's, yeah. I know she's right up there, you know, usually on people's. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, your fave genre? Of? Just maybe written stories. The stories you like to read. Mm. You know, yeah. Mm. I. Most of what I read is fiction. I read, I read a lot of fiction stories, I read a lot of romance, thriller. That's what I'm into. When it comes to reading, I'm not very good at reading poetry. I listen to poetry. I'm not very big on reading, uh, unfortunately. But I, like I said, I'm getting into it now. So yeah. Okay. Uh, I remember one time I was interviewing a lady, Bitwa Inongi. I don't know if you know her. Uh, she she scores at Buang. Uh, yeah, she scores at Buang. She was like, she's a meta. She's not a metaphorical poet. She's, she's a, she's literal. She likes. She wants. The, yeah, she wants the crowd to feel exactly what she's saying, you know, without hiding it behind someone. So now the question for you is, are you that same type of poet, or are you, do you resonate more towards metaphorical I, I, I expressions? Love metaphors. I, I, yeah. I feel like what. With metaphors, it, it it becomes a thing where you, as the listener, as the reader, you get to interpret it for yourself. You get you get to feel the message that you are looking for. And as much as I'm giving you what I I want you to hear, in some way you also get what you want to hear. And I don't know somehow metaphors are already so powerful. There's a thing about metaphors. So that's that's my thing. I love metaphors. Side question, right? Mm-hmm. I've seen that uh, you're a huge fan of Harry Potter. Big fan. Yeah, you're a huge fan of Harry Potter. How come we don't have like our own version of like Harry Potter? Like, whether it's a book series or movie series. We do. We do. We do. Ah. We just don't. It's just not. What's the word I'm looking for? Commercial? No, we have such great writers. Harry Potter is paranormal, it's fiction, right? We have such great writers, we have great authors in this country. I know a certain writer who writes on Facebook. She has this great story that is about 
that is a that is a paranormal story it's about um people who have these powers these ancestral it, it, it includes you know our our thing african thing about ancestors our gods our witchcrafts and that stuff and it's so amazing we do we have great writers it's just that Botswana hasn't come to that place where reading is a huge thing you know like if that too, it's all it's almost always like there's always space for two three writers at a time in this country even with any sort of art history in the country it's always like there's only space for five four people so we're not at a place now where people read a lot you know if we were in these stories stories like this the people who write like this publish then you would see how great how awesome these stories are and the fun thing is that they are african in their roots um now where do we connect with you how do we get the book hey you can show us the book please get the book get the book anatomy of emotions get the book to get the book you can contact me 75093693 that's my number contact me get the book um i'm also on facebook black i'm on instagram black i'm on twitter at i'm mostly active on facebook you can check my page royal underscore black yeah uh, funny thing is, I googled you, right? You did? Yeah, I googled you and I found something interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, there's the profile with the same name on the DSTV page. I'm um, not, uh, the, um, the, the, as a script the writer. Multi, yeah, multi, 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 multi choice. Yes, yes, I, yeah. I, yes. Like I said, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I'm a writer of all facets, so I'm yeah. trying to get into script writing. I go anywhere where I think opportunities will arise. So I saw that, and I went on. I developed a profile. Yeah. I have a profile almost everywhere. <laughs> if you could go to me, you, you would have seen. So I'm trying to do script writing. I'm learning script writing. So yeah. Um, any last words? Mm, buy my book, please. Yeah. Anatomy of Emotions, it's just a book about how you feel and what you felt. If you read the book, there's probably more than one poem there depicting something you felt at some point in your life. So, yeah, that's my message. Buy my book. No, nah, I don't know if you mind doing this, but would you mind doing a, a piece, like your favorite piece from the book? My favorite piece from the book? Yeah. You're going to have to read it. Yeah, yes. It's still cool. This is titled You Answered. You Answered is a poem I wrote when when all my prayers got answered and I, I realized that you know there's there's light in the end. In pain I called out to you. My heavy my heart heavy as stone as I lay on the cold floor, a pool of tears around me. Despair having replaced hope with a broken voice, I called out to you. When I had nothing to hold on to, a future too desolate to look forward to, shattered spirit and looked at the grave as my only escape, I gave you a last chance. And in that moment, panting for release, I called out to you. With a few words, positivity long drained out of me, a body shat, a body battered and covered in wounds. From every piece of me that the world had cut out, I called out to you. Today my lips curve like a crescent moon kissed by the sun. My face brightens, sparkles with joy I could never have anticipated. For when I called, you answered. My faith is restored. My heart is heavy lighted with hope. With love, with the scriptures of triumph, my voice is now strong again. And body only has healed scars to show. For the battles are fought. For when I called, you answered. You rescued me, you dressed me in an armor of love, filled me with spirit to the brim with hope and positivity. When I called, you answered. You answered. Hey, hey. (laughs) Oh man, that was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Royal Black, thank you so much for pulling through. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, may you build the worlds that you seek through the words that you let you birth. Thank you. You know what I mean? Uh, With that being said, I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.